This time on the show, is one factor of authentication enough? No, of course it isn't. That's why the CEO and founder of Yubico is here to talk about the future of authentication, plus Linux terminal tips, USB Ethernet adapters, and more. All that, this time on Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by GoToAssist Express. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morris. And of course, your weekly dose of Technolust. Hello! Guten Tag. <laughs> Wie geht's? <laughs> Los How's it going? Hey, guess what? We got a gift from a fan. Yeah? Yes, uh, we did. All right, let's kick it off. This is from Travis. Thank you, Travis. 548 uh, Market Street, number 39371, San Francisco. I don't know if there's a note with it yet. Is there a note? I don't know. Let's find what out. What is it? This is Smart SmartCom. Com. Ooh, Haze. You know what? Oh my you got gosh. a little Haze. It looks like it's never been opened. Who didn't love typing ATDT <laughs> or ATA? Or ATL0. ATL0 was really good because then you wouldn't wake your parents up when you were dialing up a BBS at oh 12 Oh my gosh. 01. I always got in trouble for that when I was like really? 12 or something. Did yeah. You, did you, do you ever do Using the thing where like, you put the pillow over the, the pillow. computer? <laughs> yeah. Yes, the pillow. No, wait, you did that too? Oh yeah, all the Email time. Email us if you did that too because I think we've all been there until you learn. Oh, Dude. ATL0. It, I never knew that. You know, I wasn't like huge geek at the time. I was always into like, uh, you know, HTTP or HTML, building my own websites, but mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about Back like command HTML line like or anything like that. Four yeah. Yay! <laughs> Juicities. What? Well, thank you so much for the Haze goodies. Check this out. We got SmartCom for Windows now. I actually think we could probably put together, we did this a while ago. We did a uh, kind of a retro April 1st episode. If you guys haven't seen oh, it, you need to go back in the yeah. archives, check it out at hack 5 That was fun. Uh, we could probably, I mean, we're in the midst of doing some BBS related stuff. And I think maybe actually being really authentic and running it off of a Windows, well, hey. if we did it off a of Windows 3.1 box, I don't know how we would network it to Telnet. Hmm. Hmm. Hack. Well, anyway, I'm just saying, it'd be really cool to do it like super authentic. Except with modern hardware, because, <laughs> come on, why not? Thank you, Travis. Uh, speaking of modern hardware, well, I'll save that to the, uh, to the end of the show. We got some uh, questions for you guys as well as some answers to your question about some, some interesting, fun hardware stuff. Uh, I wanted to also say we got a lot of great response from the USB rubber ducky segment. Yay. Uh, a lot of questions. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, go check out usbrubberducky.com, because that is your resource for all of the development and all where you can get the open source software and the firmwares and the the encoder downloads and all Wait, sorts of payloads. Wait, you mean to say we have, we have written documentation? Wiki. Yeah, a lot of documentation. What? Yeah, yeah. There's lots of good stuff coming out of this project. I'm super, awesome. super happy with it. Um, and so many questions that you know we've been answering on the forums and whatnot. And I also wanted to point out there the, the number one question. No, that's not the one question. The one nearest and dearest to my heart, kind of the easiest, is uh, what's up with the, uh, the the actual rubber duckies in the things? And and you'll notice. <laughs> This rubber ducky is way cooler because he's got some uh, cool guy rubber ducky glasses, and this guy, he's cool too. He doesn't have the red. There is probably about a one in, what would you say, like a one in 10 chance of ending up with some some sunglasses on your rubber ducky? Ah. I just, just uh, wanted yeah. to point that out because some people were yeah, like, like one in 10. you know, uh, how come there's some that have rubber, some that have sunglasses and some that don't? I'm just saying, like, some are cool. I don't know. Well, there were the ones that last week that had kind of people. Yeah, yeah. If you were in on that, if you knew about the thing with the you know, stuff. The, the, yeah. The, the, oh yeah. No, yeah. No, we, we're mic'd. You know. So anyway, I uh, kind of wanted to just go ahead and answer that. <laughs> We've got some great stuff uh, this week. Um, Stina is here, the the founder and CEO of Yubico, to talk to us about YubiKey and some of their other hardware stuff, and uh, and really just an interesting conversation about the future of authentication. Uh, I think you guys are re really going to find this fascinating. We're, of course, at DerbyCon right now, uh, so expect next week us to be back with a whole bunch of good stuff from all of the you know, wonderful speakers at that conference. It's going to be huge. Oh, hey, guess what? Yeah. I'm on Scam School this week. Oh, nice. Well, I go know. and check out Scam School because it's Brian Brushwood, and he's there, and he's all like, what? you know what, though, Brian Brushwood, why are you trying to knock off our, our, our kitten backpack haircut? <laughs> no, I told Brian that he has to have me on a show, and if he didn't, I was going to throw myself in front of a parked car, and he was like, we can't have that. So Whoa. he was like, all right. Yeah, come on. Bring it down now. I know. I was like, no, I want to. So he, he basically, I basically like threatened him into letting me on the show. That's work. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, so anyway, all that and more, but uh, we will see you Quack. on the other side. 
You guys know I've been fascinated with human interface devices. Shannon has been all about the two-factor authentication, open ID. Well, here to put it all together, Stina from Yubico. Stina, it's so Hi. great to have you down in the studio. I'm really excited about the key. I know that a lot of people have been emailing us about the key, but you should probably give us like a back of the book for those that aren't familiar. Okay, so this is a YubiKey. It's also a keyboard with one button. Mm. You press it in, you put it in your computer in the USB port, and you press the button, and it sends your identity and a one-time passcode through the keyboard interface. In that way, it doesn't require any client software. It works in all computer, all platforms, all browsers. And, and the code, your identity, is sent to a server that will provide us open source and verifies your key and you are logged in really securely. I mean, it's, it's, it's at a level of a smart card or other hardware well, application how does this, tokens. How does this differentiate from some of the other uh, products out there where there are like the physical hardware tokens where you get a number from them, the, the idea of having more than just, just a password that you know in your head, but also you know, something you have, something generated, something random and unique that's going to change uh, how does this di differ from I that? mean, it differs the way that is automatic. You plug it in, you press the button, and you don't have to, you, you, we have blind people using it. Uh, with the, most of the tokens available today, there are either six or eight digits that you have to retype, mm -hmm. and they have batteries which fail, and they're a little clunky. This is really small. I yeah, mean, I gotta say, the design <laughs> is, is quite nice because there's not actually a USB a standard type A plug or something. It's kind of all built into the yeah. design, all molded. It's beautiful. It, it's two and a half gram, mm -hmm. and it's all solid, waterproof, uh, and, and, and it fits really nice on a keychain. So the form factor is nice. Uh, the simplicity, I mean, the overall simplicity, just pressing the button instead, instead of having to retype. But it doesn't just type your password because it's not for, oh, my password's so long and complex, I don't want to remember it, I'm going to put it on the YubiKey. It's for having multiple factors of authentication and also verification of your identity. So yes. can you tell me about, a bit about how that works? Uh, so it sends out an identity, a 12-digit identity that's always the same, and then a 32 one-time passcode that changes every time you press the button. Oh, so it changes every time you press the button, not like, is there a clock inside of it? No, but it uses the clock when you put it into the computer. Uh, it, there is no clock in there. So it's a, a time-based, no, mm -hmm. I mean event-based, uh, but the, there is actually a clock uh, in the computer uh, that you can use. So uh, with a time variant code, you can press the button, you can perform a transaction, you can press again, and you, there the, you can you know, measure and the time between the two presses. Okay, so to get high, higher level of security. So I mean, aside from you know doing like a static password, you get the the two factor of authentication there. What kind of other like do challenge and response, uh, OAuth? What what kind of authentication are we talking here? I, I mean, we launched this th three years ago, uh, and we put out the code as open source, and we built a. A viral uh, open source community around it who came up with real great feedback. The first feedback was we wanted to use to be used with a static password uh, to work with TrueCrypt. Uh, and we were a little hesitant because with static password is what we're trying to educate people to not use. But with a long password, uh, you're better off than a short, easy one. So it, we've actually enabled the YubiKey, you can configure it to um, be used as a static password generator up to 64 characters. And then the, the community came back and said, we also wanted to work with Oath, which is an open authentication standard that Verizon has been driving. And we were also hesitant because it's, it's not as good because it's only limited to six or eight digits. Oh, and really? It, and it doesn't identify the users, just, so it's actually less security, but you know, we are very open to our community. So when eventually m too many people had asked for it, we, we, we said, okay, now YubiKey works. You can reconfigure it to, to work with those. And then OpenID, of course, which is supported on a lot of different websites for you to be able to log in with you know, one set of credentials, right? Yes, I mean, the YubiKey is now supported by hundreds of open source uh, platforms around the world, and OpenID is one. Uh, SAML, it works with SAML, which is another uh, open identity standard, enabling one key, all kind of, you know, all kind of websites. Now, as far as like the consumer is concerned, say like, uh, you know, if you've been in an enterprise and you're familiar with having to have like a, a FOB or a token that gives you a random number to log into, you know, 
your, your ridiculously complex VPN setup and whatnot. Uh, if you're just looking to do, you know, like on the consumer side of things, what, what would a consumer use to, to use this for like web services that they sign into? Uh, the most common used consumer application today is password managers. Okay. And there are, I can mention three, there are more coming. One is LastPass, another one is PassPack, and there is an open source version called Safe, Password Safe. Okay. And, uh, well, if we've you talked about LastPass on the show before, and we're huge proponents yeah. of having different passwords for every website, and that's yeah. one of the things that those services make easy. Yeah, so if you want to, if you're a consumer, you want to use a LastPass, you can go to web LastPass uh, website, and you can, uh, click on a special link they have there. You can come to our store. You can buy a YubiKey that works with their software, or you can, you know, you can buy. It, it's it's sort of integrated. Uh, they are supporting our hosted service. So any YubiKey you buy from us will actually work with LastPass. Well, tell me about your hosted service because you had a pilot server and then that changed. What? Give me the story because this is so great. Yeah, I mean, we put up a pilot service just when we launched to facilitate for our customers to start testing our open source server before they had to download and you know it's it is more work to actually integrate a full server um, and then we said very clearly this is a pilot server don't use it for production <laughs> and then <laughs> don't use it for production and then oh, we, we realized because we only had one server it went down yes and hundreds <laughs> of customers came back to say hey we can't log into our to our work, we're using your server and we say, okay, we have to duplicate it. So we put now five servers mm -hmm. in different locations. But I didn't feel good about this okay. because the YubiKey is dependent, the security on the YubiKey is dependent on one another thing. The, the encryption keys that goes to the server has to be secured. Or we'll, you know, what recently happened with RSA, there was a server that was breached and millions of tokens were compromised. So I, I had really, you know, I was... Yeah, it doesn't, I, it doesn't know, matter how <laughs> secure the mechanism so is, So I wasn't the key sleeping very well yeah, when sure. I felt, you know, we have these five servers out there and, and someone can hack in. We tried to do all kinds of measures. But we knew that the only, the only really good measure was to, to buy hardware security models, but they're 15000 or every $20,000 each yes. with recurring fees. Wow. And, um, and then I asked my technical team, which is, they're really smart people, and I said, we just need to secure the encryption keys. We don't need to secure the whole server. Uh, couldn't we make something sim easier? And, and what came up was our second product. It's oh, a little, little dongle that you can plug into any server mm -hmm. to just encrypt this, the, the secrets. So this helps you create the encryption keys and keeps them secure? Yeah, I mean, it, it moves out the encryption keys from the server. So if someone ha tried to hack into the server, you know, the encryption keys are no longer there, so that's and we sell it for five hundred dollars instead of fifteen thousand. So it's wow. a, it's a you know and it's what a is good compliment. Called? What? What is this one called? It's called a UBHSM. HSM is a it's a industry word for sure. hardware security model. Okay, yeah. and you and your HSM is on a USB key. Yeah, that's, so we had this is our actually awesome. our own products. We okay. have two hardware, and the rest is open source. And we have this free uh, hosted validation. Well, service I love too. open source, and I love the idea that you know this is you know something where consumers can get and and you know log in with confidence, knowing that they're they're using unique passwords when they couple it with uh, services like you said, the LastPass and the, the password safe, and and then the open source idea that you can roll your own, yep. and then it'll work in with uh, OpenID and OAuth. Uh, that's so great. In just a bit here, I want to find out about the enterprise stuff. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, more with Stina and finding out about how you can secure your enterprise. Love that idea. There are two things IT professionals and their clients have in common. They want the job done right and they want it done fast. And that's why I highly recommend go to Assist Express by Citrix for anyone in IT. It's got the fastest, most reliable support. Go to Assist Express puts clients at ease with a simple, secure, remote support. And it puts you in a position to do what you do best. Access, diagnose, and resolve the problem. With the fastest support experience and the ability to service multiple clients at once, you'll actually be increasing revenue while improving your customer service reputation. Take care of clients while they're away with the unattended support feature and get unlimited use for one flat fee. When it comes to remote support tools, I think GoToAssist Express is the best. So fast, so reliable, don't wait. Start using GoToAssist Express today. Hack5 viewers can try it free for 30 days. Go to gotoassist.com slash hak5. Again, that's gotoassist.com slash hack5 for a free trial. 